Oh, let's find the right. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to try here uh, in this episode to, and this is <laughs> going out live. Uh, if you haven't watched the setup game, setup of the game, um, I would encourage you to go back and watch that. You don't really need to see all of that information before you watch this one, uh, but it will help you, I think, as far as getting ready to go. So you saw me set up uh, my score sheet, um, set up the team uh, selection of Manchester United from the 2016-2017 season. It was just sort of a... Uh, it wasn't from any particular match. It was just um, me sort of winging it. Uh, I went back and looked and uh, they had some different choices at the various positions uh, than what I had at times. Um, the, these guys weren't necessarily their first choice defenders, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but I think did a decent job. So we're going to go with it. And um, just to show you here, and what I one of the things I meant to show you, and I, I'm not sure I'm going to get to do that, but what here, I'll, I'll tell you what, let me turn it around. So this is West Ham. And so as you can see here, this is kind of the way I have my space set up. I've got my Manchester United over here. The first, there's five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, the goalkeeper. Over here is where I keep the substitutes. Um, I've picked uh, seven of them, uh, Martial, uh, Rashford, Lingard, uh, Fellaini, Rojo, uh, Darmian and uh, Sergio Romero as the backup keeper. Uh, I'm not going to do this whole the whole time in uh, baseball demos fashion, but I figured this is the best way to kind of show you the, my space and how I've been working it out here. So, same thing here for West Ham, except uh, everything is sort of to the right side of my table for them. Again, uh, so the lineup is going to be, uh, well, it's actually going to be Jonathan Clary as the primary forward. They're going to line up in a 4-5-1 with uh, Lazzini and IU as, uh, IU as a forward, but he, he would be lined up as a midfielder. Then you've got Feguli, uh, well, Feguli and, um, uh, Actually, my uh, Fernandez are in the midfield, I believe. Maybe it's Figuli and IU on the wings, and then Lazzini and Fernandez in the central midfield. That'd be my guess. And then we've got so here's a here's a dilemma, and this is how I'm fixing it. So then you've got um, uh, Winston Reed and Fonte as your central defenders. Now West Ham plays a three-man um, or a five-man defense. Uh, in real life. They're, that's what they were doing early on. I, I actually looked it up. So James Collins was sort of their, um, if you would say, a sweeper, uh, the sort of the, the, the very central defender. Um, I'm going to, I so what I basically did was say that he's playing as a deep midfielder, and that's why I'm calling it a 4 5 1 rather than anything else. Uh, Byram would be the other outside back along with. Uh, who was the other one that was at Cresswell, I believe, was the other, uh, the left back, and Byron, the right back. Um, so, and what I want to try to do here for a little bit is pull this back and kind of see if I can get where it's sort of looking out this way. So, I've, I've got all these charts here that I've dug out. Now, I've put, like we talked about in the other video, Manchester United is going to be in a 4-4-2, and then they're, the other team, West Ham United, will be in a 4-5-1. And so there's 4-5-1 against 4-4-2. This is going to be the chart that I'm going to follow for West Ham. And I'll show you this as we get going, but here is, uh, here we go. This is 4-4-2 four, 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 versus 4-5-1. So now the nice thing about this game is you could actually, in theory, switch between formations as you go. Uh, I'm going to write these down: four, four, two. 
Um, and that happens somewhat in real life, I would, I would venture to say. Um, and thing is, I would say a lot of times in real life, for, formations can be a little bit um, fluid anyway. <laughs> uh, a three-five-two, or um, uh, yeah, or a uh, yeah, three-five-two becomes a uh, five-three-two re- really easily. But um, so. Let me see. What are the comments here so far? Here's Craig and here's Mark. Mark Russell. Hi, guys. All right. So the first thing you need to do is you need to um, figure out who gets the ball first. Now, the way they decide it. So the mechanics here is you've got two D6s, red and white. Red is always red first when it comes to the two-digit um numbers that you will find on the player cards over here and on the subsequent sheet that you uh, check, you cross-reference. Um, now, let's just go through and show you the ch- chart here. So, a 442 against a 451. And let me ch- turn my light just a little bit so we can see it a little better. So, the way this game works, there are zones. And... Maybe it's best if I bring this chart out, at least for this, as a demonstration. And they give you a... They give you a little marker to show it. So, you've got Area X, which is basically the midfield. Any play that is derived from a defensive stop or... Uh, a throw in anything like that comes starts in area X, okay, and then as the team moves closer and closer, you get to D. C is in the corners, uh, which is fittingly C for corner. B is kind of just outside the penalty area, um, and then A is partly penalty area partly its own region so we'll, we'll talk more about when you have a foul in that area so if you're moving let's say that the team is uh, moving in this direction as you get closer um, you can see that there's like these numbers plus five plus three minus that that is a, those are plus one for area C those are modifiers to whether a shot is on target or not. Basically, the farther away from goal you are, the less likely it is that you will make or get a shot accurately on frame. So these charts, let me again try and turn this some more. So these charts, they're divided up by the number. So it doesn't show, um, well, what these numbers are these numbers come directly off the player's cards. Okay, so let's say we roll 63 and Phil Jones has the, the ball. and we, So we roll a 63. You look at 63, that's 48. So then what you would do is, let's say he's in zone X. You come over here and you check 48 against zone X, which is the far right column, and it says FC. So all that what that means is foul committed. That means that he went in and either... Uh, tackled a guy too hard or he grabbed him around the shoulder or whatever and so then you would need to do a foul you'd have to do all of the requisite stuff for fouls but let's just look at some of the terminology here and this is basically adapted from the book uh you have this little quadrant here where you have shots um So uh, let's say you, the player's card says uh, six. And, and, and actually, it might be a good time to also show the anatomy of a card. And let's take Phil Jones versus Wayne Rooney. So a lot of these cards, if you look at them... So Phil Jones... So what, what you have to remember is the low numbers on a card, the low red numbers are going to equate to shots. Okay? Um, basically, the number of shots you're going to have in a match... So, Phil Jones, he only has two low numbers, one and two. So, in this case, uh, if he gets the ball inside a D and rolls either a 66 or an 11, he would get a shot. And that would be it. So, a D or inside. 
so his his chances of getting a shot are pretty pretty low in this tactic. You can see that because the shots are low compared, if you even look over here, uh, West Ham has a little bit more of a, it's kind of tough to see, but they have a couple more chances. And the reason why is that West Ham is going to be using a defensive tactic and probably be relying on the counterattack. And so they're going to clamp off a lot of what Manchester United can do here in this offense. Um, now, if they went to 4-4-3, you would see a greater sort of diagonal here of shot chances. And maybe they will in part of the way through this match. They are the home team, so in theory they would be trying to uh, win. They would be trying to go for three points, and so they might do that. But So we, we've got the shot quadrant. Oh, but let's let's finish this up. I'm getting kind of like scatterbrained. So if you take a look at Jones, and then you go to Rooney, you can see Rooney goes all the way up to nine. He's got one, two, and as you can see, they start with the double digits because double digits are single opportunity. Well, actually, all of these are single opportunity rules, so I'm not sh not exact. I guess uh, it's, it's just maybe easier to go with the single digits first, but they go uh, 66, 11 for 1, 2, and then 33 is 3, uh, 22, 4, 44, 5. But anyway, that's and all the way up to 9. So he's going to have 9 opportunities out of 36 to get a shot. So what happens then is after you, it's determined you get a shot. So he, let's say he rolled the nine, he rolled thirty-one or fifty-one on his card, and he gets a nine, and he's an A. See, even in this case, he doesn't get a shot, but he does get a chance to pass the ball, um, in in a prime location. So, anyway, so that's the difference in the cards in a way. Um, just as far as the chances go. All, basically, the cards themselves are somewhat similar. There are differences. I think defender cards are probably similar too. But I, but I, I guess the rest of the numbers, in a way, are adjusted based on maybe passing percentages or ability to uh, make probably more foul opportunities if a guy has a higher propensity to foul. Um some of the ratings we wrote down here, like a foul committed rating, really only comes into play when the opponent earns a foul suffered, which is 49. Um, so when they get a foul suffered, the player on the opposing team gets fouled, and then you roll, and uh, we'll, I'll just go through in a minute how we determine who is the one who does the foul suffered. It comes off of these ratings here. but that's So that's kind of like the difference in the cards. So... What you're doing is you're rolling dice, you're looking at a chance on the card, probably quite similar to Atba Baseball. It's kind of their model is to sort of cross-reference to a standardized chart. Um, so, uh, but let's go back to this, um, let's go back to this chart again. So what you're going to have is you're going to have S's for shots, then you're going to have the, this set of selections here, which are um, passes or dribbles, if you will. So let's say Rooney has the ball. He is player three, and he has it in zone F. And let's just say you get a twenty-five in zone. That's that's a poor, <laughs> that's a poor one to say. Let's see. Do we have a nine? What do we have here? Do we have anything twenty-two? Does that work? Twenty-two works. So for this twenty-two. Um, so six, if you roll 62, you get 22. And if you go to 22, you go from zone F to zone X, and it is passed back, essentially, to player 8, who would be a defender, Chris Smalling. Okay? And so then you just kind of go through these progressions. Once you do that, you mark off a second of your, t or 30 seconds of your time. You then roll on Chris Smalling. And, um, let's see. Let's say he gets a... Um, um, I'm trying to see where we could get a... Anybody have a, a, a lower number? Um, maybe we could get to Pogba. Let's say we get it up to Pogba. Uh, so um, maybe they go, go by a long, long ball and uh, they end up getting the ball to Pogba in uh, B. So then let's say he rolls... 64, which is 13 on his card. 
And so let's say he's in D and 13, he would get to C3. So he'd move up a zone and then back to Rooney again. And then you'd roll. And, and then you get a variety. You could get a shot, you could get a foul, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of the way this goes. But these are passes. Some have asterisks. An asterisk gives you an opportunity to have a free roll on a certain player that you would like to pass it to. So Pogba looks like, to me, he has a pretty decent card as far as passing proficiency. And the reason I say that is he's got quite a few in the 11 to 13. Um, I'm not sure he has 14, but he's got he's got quite a few low numbers, which are going to get you into passing opportunities. Um, I guess for Rooney, the other one that would be good for him, well, let's say you get a 9 and he's in zone F, Zone that'd be that'd get you all the way up to D and player five, but um, but the, so the asterisk gives you a chance at sort of a um, roll the dice. You could either take the chance that's there, or you could say, okay, uh, I'm going to be able to get into D, and I can choose Pogba. But so there's a I had to write it in here because then I had to look. I, I kept having to look it up, and I decided that it wasn't worth doing that. So if the D Defensive team has a 4-3-3 as their formation. You roll one die, and if it comes up as a 1-5, to five, like that one just did, the pass was complete to the player that you uh, at, uh, desired it to be passed to. If it rolls up a 6, then the defense steals it, and they start their play back up in X. 4-4-2, four, four, it's 1-4 to four and 5-6, to six, and then in... West Ham's case, a 4-5-1, you'd only have a 50-50 chance of being able to complete that because the that is a more robust defensive formation. So it's just going to be, they're going to clog things up a little bit more. So so those are what the asterisks are. Then you've got this big sort of field here of defense. And this is where probably, um, my guess would be 33 to 50% of your game is going to be played. It's between. It's basically that when you hit one of those, you have a defensive opportunity for your opponent. And when you do that, in the case of West Ham, their team rating or their team defensive rating is two. So you would come to the two column here, and it gives you a whole bevy of choices. You re-roll the d6s, and so that comes up as 51. You look under two and 51. And it tells you that this is a little shorthand notation. I have to give you a, a full overview of this chart, but that's a, a header into um, into area X, and then there has to be a loose ball chart, which is this. So that's what the defense is. You can have a variety of chances. If you can see up to here, the the these guys, the STX. If the t as the team gets better, you get all the way down here where you just get a straight old steal. The other team gets the ball. There's a couple of little selections here that where it says CK, that's corner kick. So in those cases that the team on offense, it would be but would have been blocked out behind the line and you would get a corner kick out of that. But it's that's pretty rare in this case. Um, but the low numbers off of this defensive chart means that you automatically get a steal. And let's say in this case it's steal to D. The defensive team would steal the ball and they would immediately play a pass into zone D and you just have to identify the player. I still haven't gone through that aspect yet, but I'm trying to do this in sort of a, a logical fashion if I can. you got a bunch here that are HE, that's headers. Then you got a bunch here which are blocks. They play almost exactly the same. Everything below where it says the ST, the straight steal, um, everything below that you have to roll off of your loose ball chart. That's why I put an L at the end of it. But it, it does give you the zone that it goes into. This is a block into D, a block into E, a block into F. And so now what happens is, so you go to this loose ball chart, and I, I just explained it in the other video. This is basically a, a distribution of percentages based on the um, the uh, team rating, three for Manchester United, two for West Ham. So the difference is one. So you go up here to where it says one, and you use this. So as you can see, in 
a dif- difference of zero. This is a 50-50, true 50-50 balls. They're going to be, and, and usually a loose ball you would hear called a 50-50 ball in soccer, or 50-50 chance. Uh, for a zero difference, that is 50-50. You get three more, which is uh, one twelfth addition to, uh, so um, I guess maybe 8%, something like that. And then you get a host more if you've got a, def- a, a difference of two. If that delta goes up to three, uh, three, it's almost all, and then four, basically, it is every 50-50 chance goes to the HRT or higher rated team, LRT, lower rated team. So that's how that's how you end up having this sort of back and forth. One other thing to mention, so we go to this loose ball chart when you have a block into E. So the offensive team tries to pass it into E, it gets blocked. And or, or tries to pass and gets blocked into the E section of the offensive zone. Let me pull this back out here and put it on the table for you. So what this means, let's say a block into E right down here. You see that block E. So let's say the offensive team could be anywhere in here and you hit defense. They try to pass, let's say they try to pass it into B from even F, let's say. It's blocked and it's going to come out here into area E. You do the loose ball chart. If the offense is the higher rated team and and retains possession. Let's say the offense retains possession. They retain it in E. If the defense earns possession, they have to start from X. So the next play would be X. So that's kind of the way this works out. When you go, when you're on offense and you get a loose ball back, you get to stay in the zone that is listed on the chart. Whereas if you're on defense and you successfully uh, steal or gain possession in your own zone, you're basically starting from area X. You could also think of area X as more or less everything from here back for the team that is attacking in this direction. So um, you're you're not going to get sh- you're not going to get shot chances from X. Um, I don't think any of the charts have shot chances from X. Um, that I'm pretty sure that's the case. I could. Uh, let me double check. I got the charts all right here. So it would be a 4-3-3 against a 4-3-3 would be the would be the most offensive against the least defensive. Um and and see as you can see here, you see when you've got 4-3-3 against 4-3-3, both teams are just going to take shots galore. And um well, we got to keep going down this uh chart because I'm kind of going in, in uh, a little bit of spurts here and there. I'm trying to cover a lot of ground and just trying to show you that, um, you know, it, it it seems, it may seem cumbersome, but once you get going and once you learn the rhythm of this game, it's it's actually pretty, pretty simple. To, so here we've got, we get down below the defense. Then you've got some other specialized chances. You've got these H, B, H, D, H, E's, all this stuff. That is more or less the same as these header D loose ball chances on the defensive chart. It's going to be the same thing here. Uh, so if you if you get a 39 off the player card and you're in zone E, you're going to have a header E. So it's going to go up in the air, and you're going to need a loose ball to determine who earns control after that header in that zone. Again, if the defensive team gains control they start they build the play out of x zone x you got a bunch here that are out of bounds uh this again is uh dependent upon the defense you are facing uh when you're up against a 433 these out of bounds chances i think it's only just the 46 line <laughs> uh, whereas when you're up against the 451 um you're going to a lot of the balls are going to end up out of bounds um, offsides, uh, an offside opportunity earns a direct indirect kick for the opposing team from X. Uh, you're going to only be offside uh, in your attacking zone, and so the defensive team is going to restart the play from the spot where um, the player was deemed offside. 
and I'm not gonna dis- I'm not gonna describe the offside rule to you. Um, it's different than hockey. It's unique, and it seems a little uh, uh, difficult to uh, understand. But once you learn how it's determined, it's pretty simple. But that's beyond what the scope of this game is about. Uh, the foul committed, again, uh, if you roll that on a player's card, he has committed a foul no matter what zone it's in. And then you would then determine who suffered the foul and whether there's any further disciplinary action through card. Foul suffered, that the player gets fouled, and that would result in a direct kick in the zone where the foul occurred. And uh, that could lead to a scoring opportunity um, for the team attacking. Uh, Also, the foul committed, which is going to be in an attacking zone, that would be a direct kick from X, zone X. So um, when you commit a foul on offense, the defensive team is not going to get a free chance at a goal. What they might be able to do is they might be able to put a long kick in and control it in zone A, which gives you maybe a chance to put a shot on. We'll see. Um, and then SP are special opportunities, and that's at the moment. I think that's the only thing I have had to check out of the game book. That's um, also, I guess, maybe if you're going to use clutch points, which I'm going to be at some point, but in this game, I'm probably not. So that is the tactics chart. Again, every result that you roll off of a player's card gets cross-referenced to tactics. So. Now, I mentioned uh, th- there's two other things that we need to talk about before I actually roll out a couple of things, a couple of uh, turns. Hi, itinerant. So, I said about the loose ball chart. How do you figure out? It, and it, it's the same way for any of these things. So, let's say you have a throw in, you have an indirect kick, you have a kickoff uh, after a goal or at the beginning of the game, the goalkeeper outlet. Uh, goal kick, um, all these things are similar mechanisms and they are the uh, the addition product or the sum of the dice. So if you rolled this, let's say we ha- we were going to kick off. I'm not, I'm not going to do, this is not official, but we're going to kick off. So we add that up, that's six and two, that's eight. We go to kick off from the midfield and that will send the ball to zone E. Okay. And um, I'm also going to have to describe timing as well here in a minute. So the ball ends up in zone E. Now, how do you figure out who has the ball? Well, that's what, there's two important, and they, they put it on nice little cards here that are very convenient. Uh, there's the player control chart and the player identification chart. They seem similar. They are a, a bit different, and they are used for different purposes. Um, so the player control chart is what you would need to do after that. So we said zone E was where the kickoff would go. You then re-roll the D6s, red first, white second, and you get 55. And you come here and you look in E, and it says player 8. Let's just say, for instance, that West Ham was the, was the team that gained control. That means their 8th player. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You can't see it down to 5, 6, 7, 8. It would be Aaron Cresswell would be the first to be playing off of that kickoff. And that in itself is a 30-second runoff. So you're going to say to yourself, does that really take 30 seconds? A a lot of what what, what we have to think of in in this game is that each each, um, result you get so if you get a, if you roll off a player's card, the clock moves 30 seconds. So if we were to roll off Cresswell, and this is just for instance, and then it goes 12. So what's 12 on Cresswell's card? It's a 31. And we were in E. We go to West Ham's chart, and it was 30. 31 was off of Cresswell's card in E. 31 E. It's automatically going to be a defensive chance. But at that point, we have gone. That's a full minute. Now you're going to say. Does that really take that? So it's just, you have to think of this as a condensed sequence. There could be three or four passes, but what the snapshot is going to give you in that first 30 seconds from the kickoff is that, so, um, let me see, do I have a piece of paper here? Just a piece of, uh, I'll use an index card. I look at it this way. As a scientist, 
you know, we, we can have a graph here, right? We could have a graph or a, a line, and, you know, you could have all sorts of points all through here. But if you want to, let's say this is time zero, this is time 30, 30 seconds, and this is time a minute. What this game is going to do is this is going to give you the point here. So you might have passed it here, 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 here. It's going to say, okay, at this point in time, Cresswell had the ball in zone E. Now another sequence goes, and we're going to get up here, and there's going to be a defensive chance that is going to occur. Now you might have had passes to Fernandez, to Collins, back to Byram, over to Byram, back to Fonte, over to Reed, and um, you know, let's say they tried to pass it to Faguli. And that's where the defensive chance. And so that's at the minute mark. So then what we would do is we would take this chart, and we already know that uh, so Manchester United is a team defense of four. So they're going to probably control this, 34. And if you look, they steal it in F, or they steal it and move it up to F. Um, now, the, the rule book says you should call the defensive thing one thirty second, and then the, the loose ball should be another. But I would say both of those, that whole sequence should just be one thirty second. So we'd be to a minute 30. Manchester United would be getting the ball in F. And how do we determine who's in F? We go back to the player control chart. We roll it again. 34. 34 in F is going to be player 7. Player 7 is Ashley Young. And so you would kind of keep going along here, little by little. Um, that's that's the next... Um, so then you would roll off Ashley Young. That's a 14. Red first, white second. 14 is 40. And then that's probably going to be another defensive against the, the, the 4 five, one. We were in F and 40. No, it won't. It'll be a header to F. So it would be a check of loose ball. Um, we would go to loose ball. And again, there's a difference of uh, one in the team rating. So we take this second column, we roll it off, and it's 15. Uh, Manchester United would retain, retain possession in, in zone F. And again, you would check the card. Now, this is where people tend to say, okay, I like the fast action cards, and they're pretty good. Um, I have yet to use them because I kind of like the rolls and what I can start doing here. Um, so I got 45 on that second roll. So uh, I got 8. Player 8. That's smalling. I can come here now, 8 and F, and that we just moved off 30 seconds as well. Uh, 48, that's going to be a foul committed by Smalling, so West Ham will go back another 30 seconds, and they're going to have a direct kick out of X. We come over here to the direct kick chart, zone X, we roll, we add together. That's five, five kits he, that is kicked from zone X into zone C, and again, you roll. Now, wait a second, I forgot to do something. I was just trying to show you the and then zone C45, just for the heck of it, that would be 4, which would be read. But anyway, Smalling committed a foul. First, what we need to do is we need to see who it's on. Now, this is where these ratings come in. So we, we've got ratings here for foul suffered. Lazini's 3, you've got 3, 2, 2, 3, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 0, all this stuff. <clears throat> the way this works, and that's where you use player identification. This chart here um, is a statistical um, distribution of pl players that you can use this for fouls committed, fouls suffered, um, assists, and injuries as well. So what these are are basically rankings. So if I roll off player identification to decide who is the foul suffered, we get 62, which is going to be player 8. So what you need to do here is, I this is the way I do it. So we've got foul suffered. Um, I just go down from the top. I go top down. So 3 is the highest number for foul suffered. So Lazzini is 1, Reed is 2, and then we go to 2s. I use 3, 4, 5 for Byram. And now we got to go to 1s, 6, Seven eight. So Fernandez was the guy who was 
fouled, okay? And that's how you determine that. The same thing would happen with injuries and with assists and fouls committed as well. You would use this to determine, well, you can either use this for assists or you can, if you're following the course of play, uh, the player that passed the ball to the guy who got the goal could be given the assist. Or you can use this to kind of go by the statistical distribution. Now, lastly, we figured out who suffered the foul. This is your line to decide if a red, a yellow, um, or just, it, this this is a, a little weird. It just says foul. I think 66 is on every card. When you So you roll the two D6s. If it's a 12, it's a yellow card. If it's an 11, it's a red card. Let's see if we can find someone with a little bit higher. Antonio Valencia is, has a higher propensity to um, endure a yellow card. So if he rolls 21. So again, another thing about this mechanism is it's not it's not a linear mechanism. The highest second digit can be six. So uh, you jump from 16, right? 16 to 21, right? 20 and one. So um, so 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 21 all earn Antonio Valencia on a roll after a foul committed. or, if he committed a foul after the foul suffered for the other team, again, you would roll the same roll. But if he gets a 21 or under, down to 12, it's a yellow card for him. If he gets two yellow cards in a game, that equals a red card, and he is off. You, you cannot substitute for him. Uh, he His position, and the way you handle that is you leave his position in the formation open, and any time the ball is passed to him, including what I would say is including off of the player control chart, the opponent is able to get possession of it. So that's and you just have to do a quick uh, change in your formation as well to put the the lesser man in the forward position. Um, you want to you want to dock him kind of out of the forward position. But uh, where was I? Oh. Down to 12. If, if an 11 is rolled, that's a straight red card. And I don't know as I've seen anybody. Is there anybody on these cards? I don't think there's anybody on these cards that has anything over 11. Oh, uh-oh, here we go. Here is uh, Samuel, Sam Byram. He's got a 12. So 11 or 12 gets him a red card. I guess he's had, I guess he must have had multiple red cards. Uh, Faguli is the same. Cresswell. Uh, so some some players get into some uh, d- disciplinary hot water, as we would say. Um, all right. So last but not least, uh, as far as I think, um, I mean, there's still there's still quite a quite a bit to cover. Let's let's talk about shots. Okay. Let's um, let's say let's say Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Uh, has the ball in B, and he, uh, let's just say he ends up with a 33. That's three. We go to the shot chart, and we see an S. Oh, that means he takes a shot. Okay. How do you handle that? Well, the way you handle that, so he's in C. We already saw from this chart here, we saw a plus one, right? Area C is plus one. So what does that mean? Okay, well, the next roll you do is off of the shot on goal chart or uh, rating. His shot on goal rating is 33. So 33 plus 1 is 34. Now let's say he uh, was passed the ball by Wayne Rooney. He has an assist rating of 5. Okay, I, it was tough for you to see that. Now, if we come over here to my little chart, an assist rating of 5 adds another 1. So you adjust from 33 to 34 to 35. So then you roll the dice, and let's see what comes up here. 54, that would be a missed shot. At Well, we'll do both, okay? We'll do both sequences. The missed shot... So he has a missed shot. We roll off of this. We add them together. That's a three. It goes over the goal for a goal kick. The opponent gains possession. Let's roll this again. That's another 54. How about that? 
There's 16, so that means it that one is under the 35, which means he does shoot and it is on target. Now you have to go to the card of Adrian and you roll again. And then you read off of the result. 51 is 1, and if you look here on the goalkeeper save chart, that's caught in a goalkeeper outlet. So that's a save outright and an outlet to whomever. You, then you then you roll control chart in that zone. Now, the thing to know about these, like I was telling you how the low numbers are good on a player's chart as far as offense, well, 10s on the goalkeeper card are um, goals. <laughs> you can see here what the, how the, how it's, but the goal is the 10. Uh, sometimes you'll have a goalkeeper special play. You'll have a foul. If a foul, if a seven comes up on the goalkeeper save chart, which is, let's see, we, I guess we don't have one on Adrian's chart. Um, the seven is a foul committed. That would be a penalty. <laughs> um, uh, foul suffered uh, that would be going the other way and then you've got these cases rebound into A, B, C, and D punches the ball away goes into these various zones and then you roll on the loose ball chart to see who is able to come up with it and, some, and number two is a corner kick uh, hand block at a, over the goal or uh, uh, around the goal for a corner kick and so you can get some builds in action that way. Um, from there, you would then select the player who you'd want to be taking the quarter kick. And, and let's say in Manchester United's case, it would be let's say Juan Mata is going to be the one swinging him in here. He's a corner kick B rated. You then roll and add off of B corner kick. And see, and on my chart here, I have a little T. Every time you see a T, you move the clock along so in this case we'd roll a five that was a four and a one a five so he take, passes it to b and a shot is going to be taken by a player in b then we would roll this 55 55 is going to be player six for manchester united that's daily blend um and it's b so again we add and it's going to be adding three to blends 23 so that takes him up to 26 and we said Mata he is an assist of 3 that adds another one so that makes it 31 we roll and that's 61 so uh, that ball is going to be over well it's going to be um, missed and then 4 on the missed goal shot chart is going to be another corner kick so again you can see how this sort of builds as it goes, you could have multiple corner kicks in a row. You could have rebounds into areas where another shot could be had. Um, there's a couple selections if you get a really good corner kick taker. Uh, B is also pretty good, but the, you, you need a 2 or a 12 to get it, where you automatically get a header shot on goal. And so from there, you would have to um, figure out which player gets that from uh, A, and then it's automatically a shot on goal by that player, and you figure out whether the goalkeeper was able to save it or not. And I think that is probably 90% of the gameplay. Like I said, it's sort of... Um, oh, what's wrong? Did it start over? That's weird. Looks like my looks like my feed started over. Maybe I should bring up my Kindle here and find out what's going on. <laughs> I was going to say I was going to play a little more of the. I was going to play this game to start and uh, just play through about ten minutes to show you the gameplay. Uh, now that I've kind of given the tutorial on it, but now I'm, I want to see before I do that, I want to make sure that I'm still recording because it looks it's something a little suspicious. My timer is moving along here, but it reset 
it's at four minutes as opposed to let's see what do we got we have, I have a bunch of comments that aren't showing up here no it's still going um, I don't know if it's still going but we will try it here so first thing you do in this game right off the bat I'm going to put my other chart up here so that way I've got this in front of me is you roll for possession or who wins the coin flip um, so uh, up to 36 is home uh, below or above 36 so 41 and above is away and so that's going to be home but what that ends up meaning is that the away team is the first to play so we're gonna I'm gonna mark this down here as they'll be the first ones to kick off we get to the kickoff chart and we kick off from Y, we add them together, and that's three. It's going to go all the way to B in that first 30 seconds. They're going to um, get it down there, and it's going to end up being to player. I'm going to move this a little closer to me so I can see it. Uh, my eyes are not working so well. Uh, uh, Faguli gets the ball. So um, he will... What will he do with it? Uh, he is going to actually immediately get a shot so he is 22 is a four that is a double which is usually a low number and um four is going and a b is going to be a shot so faguli is a shot on goal of 31 a three three takes him up to 34 and we don't have an assist so we're just going to go with it so 34 he gets a shot so uh, i'm going to mark a second line here that's another 30 seconds and we're gonna um, be checking to see if this shot that is on goal I'm gonna mark it on my sheet as a shot on goal we're gonna see if this is um, so it's gonna be off De Gea 13 and that is going to be uh, saved and rebounded to area C and actually I'm gonna say that's the minute and a half one so a save by De Gea, and the loose ball chart indicates that it's going to be Manchester United that gains possession. And um, so that will be to area X, if you remember. Anytime the defensive team takes over, it's X. 42 will be player 8, Chris Smalling. So uh, Chris Smalling will... 56, 24, 24 in X is going to be a defensive chance. I when I do this, I tick off the other team when it's a defensive chance. They're gonna they're gonna be the ones that have it briefly. And so uh, again, the defensive rating for West Ham is two, and we get a 22, which is going to mean that it is stolen and and brought up to E. And we will find out who. We're in the third minute right now. In E, it's going to be 51. That's going to be player seven. Um, that's going to be uh, Edmilson Fernandez. So in E, and West Ham will have control. 24. Uh, 24 in E, and that's going to be another defensive chance for... Uh, it's going to be blocked potentially here. Now, their defensive rating of four, so it's pretty good. And 14 for four is going to, they're going to actually get the ball all the way up to zone B. They're on a break here. And 62, that's going to be to player seven. Ashley Young on the break. And what is he going to end up doing here? 66, that's going to be a shot from B. That's a one. So he will take a shot. And it's again, we're going to add three. No pass. Uh, no assist rating. For, we don't know who got the assist. Now, his shot on goal is paltry, but that will raise up to 14. So not, not very likely he's going to get a shot on goal here. 21, that'll be a, a shot missed for Young. And we will see how he misses it. Uh, you can't really see the chart up there very well, but... Uh, <laughs> Add six, it's going to be a corner kick for Manchester United, though. So, uh, so a corner kick. So, uh, we're in the fifth minute. And um, we're going to say, again, that Juan Mata, we'll, we'll call it, say that he's going to be the corner kick taker here. 
he's a corner kick a B. And so a corner kick six, that's 11 for B is going to be a, um, that's going to be a shot from, uh, it's going to be a pass to B and a header shot. So who is going to get the header shot? Uh, we get roll player control chart B. That's going to be 35. Player three, Wayne Rooney is going to get a header and it's going to test Adrian. Will he be able to stop this? Oh, wait, no. First, it's a shot. We need to check and see if it's on goal. 32 plus 3 is 35. It is going to be off target from Rooney. And so we have to again figure out what happened on the missed shot. 8 is going to lead to another corner kick. So two shots, neither of them on frame. and uh, But they will earn another corner kick as it deflected off a defender. Mata. That adds up to 10. That will be another shot from a header in zone B. 26. And actually, I forgot. Rooney should have gotten one more because of Mata's assist rating, but that's okay. Uh, because Mata... Um, or the, that wasn't quite right. But 20... So... Um, 26 is going to be player two. That'll be Ibrahimovic. Now he is excellent at his accuracy. He is 33. Add three plus one. That'll get us up to 41. And that is going to be a shot on goal for Ibrahimovic. Will he uh, be able to uh, get it past Adrian? Let's take a roll and see. The roll is 33. But that is going to be saved and controlled an outlet. So a good save there from Adrian prevents the goal. And they, uh, I'm going to have to mark off two. I forgot to mark one off there. So we're in the seventh minute. He's going to outlet it. Uh, that's going to be five. Uh, that'll be the, to area E. And 32 will be uh, player six. Uh, that's Calary. That's the forward. Get up to the forward. And that's where they will uh, continue uh, here, heading into the eighth minute. So Cal Airy, 63, is going to be 48. He is going to commit a foul in the zone. So a foul committed for Cal Airy. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> Look at that. See that? Look at that. Oh, dead spider. Ha-ha! <laughs> that thing came right down on me. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> One moment as I get a... Oh, okay. Well, I guess he was interested in the soccer. So, uh, say goodbye to our little friend. Sorry to have ended your life. <laughs> okay, so we had Kaleri, uh committing a foul as I just had this spider crawl right in front of my face. I mean, it was like I, I was here and... The thing was right there. I'm like, see this thing moving. I'm like, oh my, what the? So he commits a foul. We're gonna. F so here we finally get to do the player identification card. Who is going to be the uh, so 16? That's going to be the most uh, most likely player to get fouled for Manchester United. And so foul suffered. It looks like that is going to be Paul Pogba, who is going to be the guy taken down and now we need to see if Kaleri is going to earn a yellow or a red for his actions 11 red card 12 yellow and it's neither so we will carry on but as they were attacking it will be um, a direct kick from X we add together uh, that'll be 4 so that will head down to uh, zone C 
And player 63 is going to be Chris Smalling, who will uh, begin the play. Uh, 43 uh, for Smalling is going to be 31 in C. Well, that's going to be another defensive chance. So uh, it's going to be off of the two chart. And so that's a block in X. And again, I don't mark the time there. We're going to check the loose ball in the same um, in the same batch. And 32 means Manchester United will retain it in X. And 36 will be able to uh, get that, which is going to be uh, Ashley Young. And 53 from Ashley Young is going to be 35. That's going to be another defense. No, it'll be a header into B. I'm wrong. So 35 in zone X is going to be a header to B. So we'll keep going here for a little bit. Uh, I'm probably going to break this off because I've been going a while. But we go into header B, and let's see who. It, so if it's under 43, it's 43 or under. Manchester United gets it. It's 45, so that's going to be 1 into X by West Ham United. And the Hammers, then, are, that's going to be taken over by uh, player 9, which is uh, James Collins. And so James Collins will... Uh, that's going to be that's going to be out of bounds, and I think that's probably a pretty good. So that would be a place where um, we will stop because we, so we've got zero zero. We've had a couple shots, two two shots on goal, one for each team, uh, two shots that were missed, uh, a foul each, some corner kicks, and uh, that's that's kind of how the game play. Uh, goes along. Um, I will complete this game here on the channel. This is a friendly. Um, I'm not sure if it'll be, um, it probably will be tonight, but I hope this gives you a little glimpse of the action. Again, um, I think this is a game that, this is a sport that is, you know, it's a sport that has a certain tempo and feel that is going to be different than a lot of other sports. Um, and, and so it, there, there's a certain aspect to it that may be baseball-like in that you're, you're going to have lots of fly balls in baseball and lots of ground balls and you you may go through some lulls in the action some walks sometimes walks aren't the most exciting thing in the world um and in in soccer as well you're going to have a lot of back and forth in the midfield you're going to have some blocks you're going to have some uh kicks out of bounds and uh when you've got a team like the hammers that is going to try and clog it up um, you may see some more of that, but I think we're going to see a goal here before this is out, but we'll have to set to see when we get back to this. So leave questions in the comments. If, uh, you have any, um, thoughts on things that could be more clear things that, uh, you'd like to see a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, dig down a little deeper in it. Um, I know that part of me would like to be able to do that with the card, uh, theory how the, how it, how the cards are developed and uh, sort of what trends you can see but um, uh, being so new to this game I think it's still easy to be trying to, to pull that out without having a lot of foothold so I don't want to say too much without being um, more more um, more more versed in it but um, yeah I think I think so far I, I like the game I think I can play it in about an hour, um, even with rolls. I know some people really are into the action cards, and I only have one deck, so that turns me off a little bit to it. Um, I don't mind just rolling. And if I'm, I'll tell you what I often do is if I'm playing here by myself, I'm still talking because what I find is talking it out helps you to remember the zones where the zone. You know, I can I can tell you that when you're doing the defensive chart. You roll, you get a header to X, and you got to do loose ball. Then you find where the loose ball is, and you find out who is the player who gets it. Some and if it's the offensive team, it can be difficult. Sometimes it can be tough to remember where the ball ended up. <laughs> so that's where I think talking it through uh, really adds something to it. Um, so doing these on the channel is fun. Um, it adds a little bit of time 
but I kind of find myself doing a little bit of uh, play by play in my on my own just because it helps to uh, keep me uh, remembering the zones and who had it before uh, it seems like when you say something you retain it a little better so again thanks if you could hit like would appreciate it uh, if you have questions drop a comment look for the rest of this game probably tonight um, it's not a re I mean it is they played this game that's one of the nice things about the Premier League uh, every every game happens. If you play <laughs> uh, Manchester United and Swansea City, you can guarantee that when if they, they played it once at Old Trafford and once at Liberty Stadium uh, throughout a season, because they do it, it's a double round rob and home and home. So uh, you never have. It's not like baseball where you could have the Mariners and the Marlins not having played in a couple of years. Uh, all these teams play each other twice. So. Um, and and uh, today the Premier League opened up uh, the 2018-2019 campaign. So um, may, maybe this will cause a couple people to be interested in what the Premier League is about. There's so many interesting aspects to that. Uh, when I if I do my project, which is going to be a full roll off of 2017-2018, there will be three teams. You may not know this. There will be three teams you will not see from there. In that tw- in the 2018-2019 campaign, they were relegated. The the bottom three are always knocked out. The top three from the league below come up. So I think I think the Wolverhampton Wanderers, uh, better known as Wolves, are one of them, which is kind of exciting to me because the first year I really got into the Premier League, 2010-2011, they were uh, in the league and they went down that year, I believe. It's kind of depressing, and it's taken them seven or eight years to get back, but they're finally back, which is kind of neat. Um, so anyway, I'll uh, catch you back up again with this a little later. We'll try to roll it out and see if we can get it in under maybe even 50 minutes. Uh, we'll just get cranking and see if we can do it. So talk to you later.